Adelf, I wanted to ask you, you've um, started this um, very interesting group called Engaged Events and you have a, a literary festival which is very different from most literary festivals that we know of, mm. uh, the Palestinian Literary Festival. What struck me was both the, I mean, the boldness of the conception as well as the, the, um, the very human nature of it, which is to say that uh, people may be occupied but they still need um, poetry, they still need literature, they need storytelling. So would you tell us something about how this idea came about? As you know and as everyone knows, the situation in Palestine in the occupied territories in Jerusalem has been getting steadily worse for the last 10 years. Um, and so there's a sort of, uh, there, there's uh, among progressive circles, there's always the question of what more can mm -hmm. we do? Uh, we, in this case, being people who are involved with the arts, with writing, with publishing. Two things that I had very much, uh, that had struck me very much when I was in uh, Palestine. One was that uh, people absolutely insisted on behaving and being treated as cultural beings. So it was not like just an issue of food or clothing. It was, we are producers and partakers of culture. And I think that you know, some of your viewers may have seen that um, after the attack on uh, Gaza last year, one day after the ceasefire, you had little Palestinian children mm. all in ironed clothes mm. somehow, you know, coming out of the rubble, going to school. So, mm. um, you know, they place a really high premium on education and on culture. And um, so um, the festival, one of the things that it does is that it, it says to our Palestinian friends that we continue to regard you as our colleagues in both producing and uh, receiving cultural input. So when we go, uh, yes, we have Western writers, and yes, we do literary events where people stand up and read their poetry or whatever mm -hmm. and engage with the audience, but we also have events where we share the event with a Palestinian uh, musical group, for example. We have jamming sessions with our poets and um, Palestinian music, or we take our authors to see an exhibition of Palestinian art. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's an exchange as much as we can make it. So it is an exchange. Um, and the other thing was that um, it is this issue of representation. And when you take a group of, of authors, of workers in the cultural field, and really you are going to conduct a literary festival, but because of the circumstances of the country, it's um, you travel around rather like a, a traveling circus or, yeah, a, or a gypsy group or whatever. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you, you start out in Jerusalem and then you might go to Ramallah and then you might go to Bethlehem and then you might go to Nablus and then you might go to Al Khalil Hebron and mm -hmm. then back to Jerusalem to, to mm -hmm. close. And so um, this is there is a practical necessity to this because of the Israeli checkpoints because mm -hmm. there's something like 560 Israeli checkpoints all over the West Bank and it's uh, not a joke for the Palestinians to negotiate these checkpoints they have a system of passes which um, you know in theory can mean that that they, they are allowed to pass but in fact it's down to whichever Israeli soldiers at the checkpoint to allow them or not to allow them um, and so rather than putting our audiences through that we travel to them we go through the checkpoints and it does also mean that we then um, you know have events and have relationships with students in every university in these cities that we are starting to build up relationships with theatrical groups with musical groups and so on so if you like we could you could you could think of us as um, as the bee flitting from flower to flower to to you know um, encourage and stimulate actual existing Palestinian artistic and cultural production and then making these authors coming in from the West aware of it. Absolutely, and because the participating writers must also um, actually go through a, a huge learning experience, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes, they do. And it's very interesting because <clears throat> actually everything, everything that has come out of this so far has been kind of um, 
of terrific calibre and has also been incredibly human because what happens is that people realise that the Palestinians are in fact that their effort, their resistance of the occupation takes the form of living full lives as human beings and part of that is as cultural beings. And so um, if people expect to find a community that is downtrodden, that is miserable, um, that is really made up of victims or people sitting you know, in the ruins, they find that it is not so at all. The ruins are there. The checkpoints are there, the soldiers are there, the settlements are right there, but somehow inside all this there is a community that is active and that keeps its heart and keeps its human consciousness and keeps its creative abilities. And that is an amazing thing for people to, to come to grips with, really, and to understand that there is a living, a living entity here that is actually under attack and that there is an attempt to strangle it day by day. It's not something that's sort of half alive or that's ill or that it is living vibrant and it's being closed in on day by day. Well, we've been talking about, you know, uh, various forms of siege being occupied and um, uh, I was hoping, Radva, that you would um, talk a little about the, um, the prison narratives that you've written about and you, you spoke of um, writing about prison experience as a sort of significant subgenre in um, uh, Arabic literature and I think that is something quite um, new for many of us to hear. Yeah, I, I was, uh, I've been interested for some time in prison narratives and I started collecting books about uh, prison memoirs, Political in, not only, not only uh, Arabic uh, memoirs, memoirs written in Arabic, uh, but uh, from different parts of the world, mm -hmm. and from Eastern uh, West Africa, from Southern Africa, from different places of the world. Uh, but then uh, I started uh, exploring uh, the different works by uh, Arab uh, political prisoners, uh, whether the poems or the prose writings, uh, autobiographical works, memoirs, uh, novels, uh, written by them, and I, I was amazed by uh, the variety and the wealth of uh, this production from uh, Morocco uh, to Iraq. I mean, see, mm -hmm. uh, very many books and uh, a huge number of poems. Mm -hmm. uh, whether works produced uh, during the years of detention or works produced after, usually the poems. Uh, are produced uh, in uh, prison, yes. but the novels and the memoirs Correct. are written after the event. Yes. yes, so I did that, and then I realized that that my interest uh, was not only the the interest of the researcher, uh, but but I was not aware. I was exploring all those writings, and I realized uh, a few a couple of years. Uh, after that, that, that I had a novel in mind, and that maybe mm -hmm. that was why I was reading all this material. So I, I wrote about uh, the, the prison experience of, of three generations from the same family. Uh, a communist father who was detained in the, uh, uh, in the 50s, and then uh, the daughter who was, who was part of the student uh, Egyptian student movement uh, of the 70s and then her very young brother who was detained during the uh, anti-war demonstrations uh, the, the in support of Iraq and against US invasion of Iraq about uh, Palestine uh, that, that part uh, of, of what is happening in Palestine uh, yes there is uh, a struggle over the land, uh, a struggle between colonized and colonized. But there's also uh, a conflict regarding the narrative. Mm -hmm. Like you have two different narratives at conflict. And here comes uh, the responsibility of the Arab writer. Because, I mean, in, in world media most of the time, uh, our narrative was submerged in favor of another narrative, which is basically a colonial narrative, mm -hmm. a land with no people for a people with no land. Yes. 
that was the, the Zionist version. And the Zionist version is typically colonial because that, that was always the case. Robinson Crusoe yes. arrived at yes. the deserted island yes. and Friday is there just to, uh, to, to, serve him, him. <laughs> to serve him. And Robinson Crusoe will name him. He has no name. Yes. He says, mm -hmm. I'm going to call you and the Friday of his tongue. And you call me master. <laughs> so, I mean, so part of mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. responsibility is to, uh, to give our narrative, to relate yeah. our narrative, which will not be uh, expressed only in the forms of novels and short stories, but novels and short stories and history books and, and different kinds of intellectual production mm -hmm. and films, of course, and, 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 uh, and maybe dances and yes. dramas, etc. Yeah. Et All forms of culture. Yes. I think I think that sums it up beautifully, Radwa. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much, Edda. Thank you, Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you.